Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to talk about extrema on an interval. So extrema are the smallest and largest values of a function. Often we call them the extreme values, the biggest and the smallest, right? So the smallest value is called a minimum and the largest value is called a maximum. We generally classify extrema into two main types. We have a local or sometimes called relative extrema, and then we have absolute extrema. So let's actually start with that second one. Absolute extrema is the biggest of all large values for an absolute max and the smallest of all small values for an absolute minimum. Whereas a local or relative extrema is a little bit softer. It is just saying this value, this y value is larger than those around it for an, a local maximum or smaller than those around it for a local minimum. So let's take a look at what we mean by the distinction between those two. So if we think about for this graph shown here, which we're going to take as having a domain of all real numbers, then when we think about absolute extrema, what is the largest y value that this graph achieves over its interval? Well, we can see that this value up here, this y value, this top of this hill, there is no y value larger than that. So that would be an absolute max there. If we think about an absolute minimum, if we thought about the smallest y value that is achieved over the entire domain here, we would see that because this function continues down indefinitely, we don't have a smallest y value. So we would not have an absolute max. Now, if we think instead about local extrema, so kind of a softer term, a local max would be any value that is higher than the values around it. You could think of this as any top of a hill. So this absolute max that we found earlier is also a local max because it is higher than all the other y values in this kind of zoomed in window around it. And even though this isn't the largest y value that exists, we also have a local max here because again, we have this top of a hill or the tallest y value, largest y value in that window. Now we didn't have an absolute minimum, but we do have a local minimum. Local minimums can be thought of as kind of the bottom of a valley. So here we get a local minimum. We can see that a function may have both types of extrema, so a function could have a min and a max. It may have only one or the other. Or in fact, we have functions that don't have either mins or maxes. So let's take a look at these three graphs on the screen and try to determine what we can see that we have and what we do not. So taking a look at this first function, I can see that I do have kind of a hilltop. So I do have a maximum going on here. This maximum happens to be both an absolute maximum because it is the highest y value of all the y values and a local maximum. So it is both absolute and local maximum. When we start to think about minimums, we can see that this graph asymptotically approaches the x-axis in both directions and therefore is never going to actually reach a smallest value nor do we see any sort of valley bottoms like local minimums. So this one has no minimums, be it absolute or local. So this one was one we have maxes, no mins. Let's take a look at this next function. We, here's our cube function, taking this over the entire real number line. When we think about highest y values, since our right hand side increases without bound, we do not have an absolute max. 
since our left hand side decreases without bound, we do not have an absolute minimum. And when we look, we don't have any hilltops or valley bottoms. So here we have no extrema of any kind. No minimums and no maximums. We can also have graphs that have both types and in fact multiple of each type. So here we have kind of just our typical sine wave and I can see that I would have two hilltops just in the frame that I can see and knowing what I know about this sine wave these are also going to be the tallest y values so these are going to be both absolute and local maximums and then these valley troughs down here these are going to be absolute and local minimums in fact the sine wave taken over the entire real number line would have infinitely many absolute and local maximums because every top of that wave would be an absolute and local max and infinitely many absolute and local minimums because every valley trough would be an absolute or local minimum. All right, let's see if we can take a look at some functions and try to determine do we have absolute extrema? Do we have local extrema? Can we find them? So let's look first at absolute extrema. So let's see, can we find an absolute max if it occurs and an absolute min if it occurs? So absolute max, I'm looking for the highest y value that the graph achieves. Well, I can see that happening here. So I have an absolute max at zero comma two. So my maximum y value is two and it occurs when x equals zero. For an absolute minimum, if I look for the smallest y value that is achieved, it would be here at two negative two, but since we have an open circle, we do not ever actually reach negative two. In fact, we get infinitesimally close to negative two, but never actually there, which means we do not achieve an absolute minimum for this function. Okay, now taking on local extrema. So if we look for a local max, or maybe more than one, and a local minimum, or maybe more than one. Local max, we're looking for top of a hill. So we have that here. Again, our absolute max is also a local max. So at zero, two. And a local min, we're looking for bottom of a valley, a hill trough, if we have one. So I do not see that here, so we are going to have no local minimums. All right, let's take a look at this and answer the same question. Do we have absolute minimums, absolute maximums, and then same question for local extrema as well. So do we have local mins? local maxes. Okay, so absolute minimum, smallest y value that the function achieves at all. Well, it seems like that would happen here. We achieve a smallest y value of zero at the point two, zero. So our absolute minimum there is two, zero. Since that is also the bottom of a valley in our graph, that is also a local minimum. So I'm gonna go ahead and jot that down as a local minimum as well. Our absolute max, we are looking for the largest y value that is achieved over the entire interval. That seems to happen here. We achieve a maximum y value of four when x equals four. So our absolute max is at four, four. Local max, we're looking for the top of a hill. I do not have any hilltops here, so I would have no local maximum. 
Okay, so we know that we can do this from a graph, we can look at a picture, but how can calculus help us find these things or tell us whether or not they exist? Well, all of that begins with the extreme value theorem. The extreme value theorem talks to us about the existence or lack thereof of absolute extrema. So here it says, if f is a continuous function, so that's gonna be important, if it is continuous, over a closed and bounded interval from A to B, so continuous on a closed interval, then there is a point in that closed interval at which F has an absolute maximum, and there is a point in that interval where F has an absolute minimum over the interval. So the extreme value theorem says if we can show that our function is continuous on a closed interval, it will achieve the absolute minimum and an absolute maximum, at least one of each. Okay, so we're gonna leave it there for this video. In our next video, we'll talk about how to find those absolute minimum and maximum values. Until then, we'll catch you next time.